Ram Ram. Che Bashroom Bali, hey! <laughs> Someone loves Hanuman, Jay. Getting all excited here. <laughs> Ram Ram World Raises. Well. Ram. <laughs> Let's watch. Why does Hanuman worship Lord Ram from the YouTube channel Mythical Man? Yeah, and remember, mythology means ancient history to us. So let's not get caught up on that word. And let's dive into the importance of this video. Hopefully it makes it really clear. And of course, I'm going to talk about it as to why I think that's happening. So stick around for that because mm -hmm. it's going to be good. And remember to hit that like button for Hanumanji. And if you mm -hmm. don't like Hanuman, then don't hit the like button button but imagine if you're watching this video with me you like them so you need to sh show it remember it's our intention and our action that determines the results so if you like Hanumanji you have to declare it <laughs> by hitting the like button okay yeah. yeah subscribe if you aren't um and enjoy yeah and first of all why are we binging Hanumanji videos oh right God. now? Yeah. It's because we're watching The Legend of Hanuman right mm -hmm. now by Hotstar for Patreon and YouTube member sections. And I can't believe we waited so long. I know, it's so good. It's, it's so really good. good. Ever wondered why Lord Hanuman worships Lord Rama? It is highly intriguing to see such a mighty warrior who can turn the entire city of Lanka into ashes within minutes worship Ram. Mm. On the face of it, this seems illogical because on one side, there is Hanuman who possesses each and every skill, knowledge, and power that an individual can imagine. Oh, yeah. On the other hand, there is Ram, mm. the mighty king of Ayodhya. What's the need for Hanuman to worship Ram? Yeah. Buckle up as we'll unearth some exciting life lessons and theories while answering this question. Buckle up. First, you need to understand the fact that Hanuman and Ram are both avatars. Mm. Ram is the avatar of Lord Vishnu, while Hanuman is the avatar of Lord Shiva. As the protectors and destroyers of the universe, and essentially being different forms of the same, they have unconditional love for each other. Yeah. Therefore, we see on many occasions <laughs> that Lord Vishnu is praying to Lord Shiva. Yeah, when you see Shiva cool. meditating, who do you think he meditates to? Shiva is praying to Vishnu. <laughs> there is a cycle between the two of them. Mm. They are one. So we know that Vishnu is Shiva's devotee. And similarly, Shiva is Vishnu's devotee. Sweet. They help each other as they are each other. Confused? Let us explain this further. So the story goes as Ravan, Whoa. the antagonist of the Ramayana, received a boon that no god, spirit, demon, or force of nature would be able to kill him. Robin thought that humans, and mockingly monkeys, were too puny to try and attack him. But he soon became egotistical and began his reign of destruction. When Vishnu heard of this, he incarnated as a human being to put an end to Robin. And Ram is a very special avatar of Vishnu, as he is often oh, yeah. referred to as Shiva's favorite avatar. Ram is the protector of Dharma or moral duty. He is revered as the most perfect man to have ever walked on this planet. As a result, Shiva couldn't stop himself from helping Ram in his quest to end Robin's brutality. And to honor Vishnu, he took on the form of a monkey. The monkey's name was Hanuman. When Hanuman and Ram met for the first time, Hanuman was impressed at what Ram had been through. The two looked at each other in two ways, physically through their eyes and spiritually through their souls. As the Shiva in Hanuman recognized the Vishnu within Ram and vice versa because of their wow, gods. So, cool. to put it simply, Hanuman is devoted to Rama because Shiva is dedicated to Vishnu. Hmm. There's another way of answering our million dollar question. Consider a photosynthesis analogy. A sapling might have many potentials. It might grow to become a large fruitful tree giving shade and shelter to many. But to realize this potential and grow, it needs the sun. If Hanuman is that strong tree, Ram is the sun. Ooh, Hanuman I needed like Ram's spiritual <laughs> guidance and companionship to become a great individual. Without Ram, he was just a remarkable monkey born with powers received from deities mm. like Pavandev, Lord Brahma, and Indra. But only as a devotee of Lord Rama, mm. he used all those powers to uphold Dharma and become revered. Yes. Only as a devotee did he set an example of devotion yet unmatched. Before knowing about Ram, Hanuman was lost and possessed a monkey mind. He had everything, yet he felt video. empty, visionless, mm -hmm. totally. wandering in the woods. 
trying to find his life's meaning. Empty. He kept jumping mm. from one branch to another and could not find inner peace. Mm. Finally, looking within himself, cool. he found Ram, peace, clarity, and a goal all mm. at once. For the first time, he sat in peace. If you dive deeper into this analogy, you can relate to Hanuman as yourself. You can possess many things, but if you don't have a guiding force, you'll be just as lost as Hanuman was in his early life. As the sun doesn't need anyone else to shine, Lord Rama doesn't need anyone else to be great. But Hanuman needed the noblest man to walk this earth to guide him to his life's goal, and thus he became an ardent devotee of the almighty Ram. Ever wondered why Lord Rama is often revered as Suryavanchi? It is because of this very reason. If you're not satisfied with the explanation, here's another reason why Hanuman loved to worship Ram. Once Narada Muni went to meditate in a particular grove that Shiva had blessed with a boon that no meditating sage would ever be disturbed here. Hmm. To this, Indra became concerned and thought, why is Narada meditating so strongly? I'm sending Agni, Varuna, and Vayu down to disturb him. Agni, Vayu, and Varuna went down and did everything they could to break his concentration, but they all failed. Then Indra asked Kamadeva, the god of love, to finish the job, but he too was unable to break Narad's meditation. Soon after that, Narad woke up and said, I have defeated all the gods. I have even defeated the god of love. I am beyond lust. Whoa. He told this to Shiva, who suggested Narad to not share this news with Vishnu. Guess <laughs> what? Nara did precisely what he was advised not to do. After telling everyone about his feet, he strolled into the woods and found a beautiful princess. While inquiring about that young woman, he learned her name is Vishwamohini, and she is about to choose her husband from a group of qualified men. Narad wanted to become her groom and asked Vishnu to make him the most attractive male to ever <laughs> exist. To this, Vishnu countered that he thought Narad had just conquered the god of love. Narada agreed, stating that he did conquer the god of love, but now he wants to marry the princess, hmm. and for that, he wants to have the most distinctive appearance. Hearing this, Vishnu promised to give him the most distinctive appearance. He gave him all the ornaments and made Narad the most beautiful-looking prince, with the face of a monkey. He went oh. to the assembly and stood with the highest confidence that the princess would choose him <laughs> as her husband. Thanks. To his surprise, she laughed and walked past oh, him. Geez. Narad couldn't fathom what he just saw. Soon he came to know that he had a face of a monkey. He was boiling <laughs> with rage and cursed Vishnu. What? He said, Vishnu, I asked you to make me beautiful so that I could get the heart of my beloved. And instead, you turned me into a monkey. <laughs> now I've lost my beloved. I curse you, Vishnu. You will lose your beloved and endure the pains of separation from her. And to get her back, you're going to make friends with monkeys. They're going to be your helpers, your saviors, Whoa. and your devotees. Oh, yeah. Vishnu smiled when he received the oh. curse and said, I accept your curse, Nara, <laughs> and I will incarnate as a human being. And my goddess Lakshmi will be my wife, and I will enter separation from her. And now I must go down and save the earth from the atrocities of Ravana. Hmm. So... I accept your curse. So when Vishnu took the human form of Ram, Shiva accepted his responsibility of playing the role of a monkey as Hanuman and helped Vishnu to fulfill his curse. It is said <sighs> one who sees Ram through the eyes of Hanuman experiences eternal bliss. <sighs> this again brings us back to our previous conclusion that this was all a game of love, respect, and care played by Shiva and Vishnu in their respective forms of Hanuman and Ram. And that sums up this video. We hope wow. you enjoyed the story of eternal <sighs> devotion. Do let us know your thoughts on it in the comments below. We'll see Same. you next time. Until then, stay mythically mad. <laughs> stay mythically mad. Whew. That was packed with information. Yeah, and then the whole Narad cursing and then Kamdev and defeating the gods. So I don't think we've heard that story before. Right? So that was very cool and then the curse and then Vishnu accepts the curse that okay so and then that's why yeah Rama is separated from the beloved and then needs the help of monkeys or banners so also in this video let's get to the bottom of it if every anybody knows for sure because there's a lot of people who believe that Hanuman was a monkey deity and then others are saying that he's a banner right so if everybody wants to comment what is it? Is it Vanar or monkey? Because I remember in the Hanuman Chalisa, 
it was very clear in there that it was a monkey. So yeah, of course, more evolved monkey perhaps. So then he was a little bit different than the Vanners. The Vanners were still there in the Chalisa, but the story goes that he was born from a monkey. That's why I'm still a little bit confused by that, but other, but other than that, it doesn't matter to me, right? What it is, a Vanar or a monkey, because you know, who is he really, right? Devotee of Ram, and that's what this video is all about. And then why, right? This was a phenomenal video. We should mention that first, like yeah. phenomenal. Oh yeah. I can't believe that, I, I don't know, I feel like a little bit speechless. It just got right to the root. And also cutting through those barriers of the duality and the separation of which is the higher deity, yeah. Vishnu or Shiva, <laughs> right? They're one in reality. <gasps> but they both have their separate roles and then they're both playing a part, right? So then Vishnu, of course, wow. having to incarnate as Lord Ram to rescue Sita and end the reign of terror of Ravan. And then, of course, Lord Shiva wants to be a part of that, so incarnates in, you know, as Hanuman. And I didn't go into the details of how that took place, so we're still kind of missing that with these videos, but hopefully we get to the bottom of it, of how exactly... Yeah, Lord Shiva incarnated as Hanuman because we know that Hanuman is the son of the wind god. So it's like extra powerful, right? And we also know that, yeah, Lord Ram or Lord Hanuman is the embodiment of devotion, selfless service and worship of Ram, right? And then Ram being the ultimate, right? Yeah. So yeah, incredibly important. But yeah, this video was great. The Phenomenal. images, the depictions. It the only voiceover. has four thousand views. Wow! Oh boy. And two hundred likes. That's so unreal. Like why? It's like mm -hmm. it's one of the best videos. Look at the comments. Yeah, it needs more. This is one of the best common uh, videos I watched lately. I, I, yeah. And what did wow. that first comment say? It said best explanation. Best explanation of Hindu history so far. Amazing. Yeah, they worship each other, right? Wow. So fantastic. So oh, beautiful. Like literally, just the divine play. Yeah. Wow. And we even know that from, you know, B.R. Chopra's Mahabharat. So Sri Krishna was also worshiping Shiva, right? And Krishna, Vishnu. Worship Shiva, and then when Shiva's incarnated, worshiping Vishnu. And it was a Narayan, Narayan. I'm not sure if that was Narad, because, well, perhaps, but if it is, then we didn't know that part of the story about him, if it was him. Well, we know nothing about him, do we? Not really. Yeah, we only know that he's always around Vishnu, that he's like his... Oh, yeah. But then we, we didn't know, because that, think... that seems a little weird that he would curse Vishnu, though. Yeah, why? Sage. But I guess sages are <laughs> why? cursing all the time. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, so anybody knows if that, that was accurate or if it is, uh, yeah, the Narai on the Narai. And in the end, it's not even a curse because it's like, it's so, it's like a blessing. It's part of the divine play. Because it turned out so incredibly beautiful. And yeah, one more thing, be. how incredible that you are cursed and instead of like, oh, poor me, I am cursed, hmm. Shiva and Vishnu, like, turn it around. Yeah. And give us, like, a true gift. Like, they turn it into a literally a true gift. Oh, yeah. Instead of, like, oh, blah, 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 Absolutely. Blah, blah. Yeah, if you're cursed, don't pout, pout about it. You gotta <laughs> don't flip, pout. You got to flip, flip it around. Be like, yeah. everything's part of the divine play, yeah. right? Whatever. And that's also accepting your own karma yeah. in a way, right? When things are happening to you negative things the best thing to do you know to prevent it from to keep on happening is to own it it's like okay i must have done something this is my karma this is my curse and then i just gotta mm -hmm. live with it and, and then it beca it gets exhausted even if it takes this whole lifetime who cares because we're eternal immortal beings going through the cycle of rebirth seeking moksha liberation enlightenment salvation whatever you want to call it we're on the upward journey and then we gotta keep that in mind right wow yeah, i so, love this video so much yeah cool fantastic mm -hmm. so yeah let us know everything how accurate it is and then the whole narad story if that is accurate any more details on that and are you one of those beings that sees shiva and vishnu 
as part of the same source? Are they one in reality? Uh, let us know because we gotta we gotta get to that because the more we understand non-duality, that there's one supreme source, and we let go of the divisions and the separations and the differences, then the, the more peaceful we can be because we don't have to defend our mm -hmm. chosen deity all the time. We accept that, okay, well, there's other depictions, and some of them are just as high, and they're all part of the same source. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's go. Let go of separation and division, and, uh, yeah, be like Hanumanji worship service surrender kindness love yeah. duty dharma so let us know everything leave some hanuman emojis and uh, remember raise yourself and raise the world thank you so much everyone we love you mm. peace